Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More and welcome to another one of my real estate investing videos. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a commercial rental property I bought last year, um, fixed it up, ended up renting it to an oil company, and then just refinanced it last week. So I'm talking about all the numbers, how it worked out, what we're making on it, and then I'll show you the before and after videos as well, and then even some in-progress videos on what the property looks like while we're working on it. So before we get going on that, make sure you check out investformore.com for more information on my rentals, flips, being an agent, all that good stuff. I'm in the process of starting my own brokerage, so that's been exciting if you've been following along with that. Um, we're supposed to move into our new space this week, so we'll see if that happens or not, um, hopefully. And then of course, we've got a bunch of books too on rental properties, flipping, being an agent, um, all kinds of great stuff. So um, this property, I bought for two hundred and ninety-two thousand from the MLS. Uh, it's listed for a while. It was vacant, not in great shape, so that's kind of why it sat on the MLS for a while. But it's a big property, over seven thousand square feet. And I knew there was a lot of value there, so um, I ended up making an offer, got the property, uh, we closed on it. I actually used private money to buy it, even though that wasn't my plan in the beginning. And then we went to work fixing up a little bit, did some flooring, paint. Um, heating work, electrical plumbing, and ended up having a company approach me while we were fixing it to rent it. So we ended up getting it rented for $4,500 a month just on the main floor. Um, still have the basement, which we could rent if we want to uh, later on after we finish it. And um, so it turned out to be a really good investment. Um, ended up refinancing it and getting a lot of my money out that I spent on it. And it's still making about $1,000 a month. So it's been a pretty cool process. This is kind of the first commercial property I bought like this. I just kind of want to show you guys the whole process, how it worked, um, how everything progressed, and how it's turned out so far. So we'll start off right now with the first video I did um, before uh, we started in rehab, show you what the property looked like, and you can kind of see what my mindset was and what our thoughts were in the beginning of this process. Um, so I'll show you, that's an A&W right over there. I'm actually in Eaton, Colorado. That's a four lane highway. See that silver truck driving by? So it's really close to a very busy road. Um, just off that very busy road a little bit. Repair shop right across there. Then there's some houses across the street on that side. But this property was for sale for a while. I think they started almost 500,000. Kept dropping the price. I happened to see it come up for sale on my hot sheet or the price drop and uh, they lowered it down to $325,000 after it been under contract a couple times. I saw it, it's huge, um, older though, built in the 60s I believe and uh, you know, needs a little bit of work, can't really see much of the building, but as big as it was, it's 7,500 square feet total. I knew there's a ton of potential because properties in this area you know are selling for hundred dollars a square foot if they're leased and rented which would make it worth seven hundred thousand dollars now there are some quirks about it that probably won't make it worth that much but it's still I think gonna be a really good investment and uh, I'll show you inside but one of those quirks is you know half the square footage is in the basement which is unfinished so here you can see they actually kind of made an exterior entrance to that basement um, at some point that was probably nicely landscaped but um, the original plan for who built this building was he was a doctor he wanted to have his doctor's office on the main floor and live downstairs in the basement so this property is actually zoned for mixed use. You can have residential or commercial in it. So I think that also adds some value as well. And according to the agent I bought this from, it was under contract twice before I bought it. And both of those investors were planning to convert it to apartments, residential units. And it just did not make sense monetarily to spend that much money converting it to residential units. My plan is to keep it commercial, you know, do some light fix up, get it leased, and once it's leased and has income coming in, it should be worth, you know, 
for five hundred thousand dollars. I can't remember what I told you I paid for it, but I got it for two hundred ninety-two thousand. Uh, that was my first offer. They accepted it. It's kind of hoping, you know, oh maybe I should offer less, but it's okay. But you can see it used to be a dentist office. Um, had some other uses over the years, and right now it's two units up. And like I said, the basement's unfinished, but you could add more units. So it's got a handicap bathroom right here. And then this was kind of used as a waiting room um, for both units. And that was the entrance for both units before. So I'll walk you through it. Uh, it's a little intimidating, <laughs> out of my comfort zone, buying such a large building, also having it vacant, also, you know, not knowing exactly how much needs repaired, what to fix, what to do, so that we can get it leased again. But there's very little for lease in this town, I think. You know, we'll be able to lease it out for, you know, I would think, the whole place would be at least $3,000 a month on the top floor without us doing anything to the basement. If we got lucky and a user wanted to, um, you know, use the storage room, use the basement, we could lease it out for even more. Once we get it leased, then maybe we say, hey, we're going to finish the lower unit, lease that out as well, and uh, go from there. But the first plan is maybe paint, spruce up, these upper units a little bit and then try and get them leased and go from there. So that was the first unit. You can see it's got kind of a, a locking door here if you want that to be the end of the unit. Um, or you could include this if you want to put a little kitchen in here, break room for that other unit. Um, and then this is the start of the second unit back here which has a ton of little rooms like this. <laughs> so it's got Kind of water sinks in almost every room, so it was set up to be, you know, for a dentist, for a vet, um, a doctor, all kinds of uses. There's an attic up there. It's got almost a flat roof, just a tiny bit of pitch, and just a little weird attic in the very middle. Um, you know, here's another just office like that. All over the place. Here's kind of the work area main part of this unit back here, which is kind of split up. There's no real, you know, open area. So we thought about taking this out, but I think we'll just leave it, put up for lease, kind of see what people say, and then if we need to make some adjustments, change some things for whoever wants to lease it, we can do it at that time. But then we might paint things, you know, spruce things up a little bit, fix some lights so they're not broken, replace light bulbs, do simple stuff for right now. Some of the windows are older, might need replaced. But yeah, it just goes on and on like this in here for a while. Another bathroom right there. More offices. More offices. <laughs> um, at one point in the last year or so, I've thought about starting my own real estate brokerage and thought about buying my own commercial place to put it in, and this might actually be a cool place to do it, except for the fact it's like 15 miles from my house, and I'm very spoiled, and I like driving only five miles to work, and it would probably take me 25 minutes to half an hour to get to work every day over here. So that would not be ideal for me. I'd want to be a little closer. I know a lot of people have a lot longer commutes than that, but like I said, I'm spoiled and half an hour each way every day is an hour every day and that's an hour, that's seven, what, five hours a week. Time adds up when you're not using it wisely. So more offices here and then uh, right here, we're back to that reception area in the very front where I started out at. So we'll go downstairs, show you that. So that was just the first floor. There's an entire full basement down here. So 
like I said, this is all unfinished. This room actually has a fire sprinkler system. So we're thinking they must have had some kind of medical records, something that they had to have a fire sprinkler system for to protect. But the rest of the building does not. But tons of storage space down here. Like I said, if one of the places up there wanted to you know, lease this part for storage, hey, that'd be great. I can store some of my stuff in there as well. Here are the heating systems for the entire place. Um, three furnaces right there, kind of um, hot water heater, got your electrical panels. And that's one th thing that's intimidating about a commercial building like this is there's so much more electrical heating, plumbing going on than what I'm used to with the residential property. So we had the plumbing looked at, we had the electric or the um, heating system looked at. I didn't do a full inspection. So <laughs> I was telling Nikki, my project manager on my flips, that yeah, you know, I probably should have done more due diligence on this property before I bought it. But I think it's a good enough deal that it's going to work out, even if we do find a few more problems with it. Another storage room. And then. As you noticed before, the, the rooms back there don't have any windows, so they definitely would not be as valuable. Here is where the residential unit was supposed to be that was never finished. So you can see it's still even dirt floor. But it's got tall ceilings. Those are nine feet. Um, pretty open, have these pillars in the middle, but still very open. Lots of windows. You've got your entrance down there. So we could turn this into a commercial unit put a bathroom kind of in that room where I just was. I don't know if you remember, it's a still storage room. Put a bathroom in there. We could turn this into a residential unit if we really wanted to. I don't know how much demand there would be, but there's probably some. Be good size, it would be um, 1,500 square feet probably. So it could be a nice residential unit. All types of things we can do. But I'm gonna wait until we figure out the rest of the building first before I do too much down here in the go from there so that's the building uh, i'm excited it's my first real commercial investment i bought a, a small shop earlier this year but it's mostly just to store supplies for our flipping business it was like a thousand square feet I'm not really leasing that out it's just storage so it's kind of commercial but not really this one's full-blown true commercial building it's big biggest building I've ever bought so it's 7500 square feet and then, uh, yeah, it should be exciting. And for those of you wondering, I, I had another really big commercial place under contract earlier this year that was 250,000 square feet. I um, decided to start big if I was going to start in commercial. That fell through. Um, a number of reasons it fell through, mostly access issues and repair issues. But uh, I'll have a video of that property. I took one when I first looked at it. I'm going to go out there and take another one here soon and go over kind of a case study of how that went. So watch out for that. That's a pretty crazy and amazing building. But um, this one's a little smaller, probably a little wiser to start with something not quite as massive as that one. So uh, uh, financing, yeah, I, I borrowed private money to buy this. So I was talking to my banks, had two banks who were interested in doing it. One took two weeks to get back to me. And they said, oh, we don't think we can do it. I'm like, thank you. And then uh, another one took uh, another week and then said, oh, we can do it. Great. Then a week later, I said, oh, our appraiser um, backed out. We need another two weeks. And the seller didn't want to extend. So I talked to one of my private lenders. He's going to finance it. I'm putting 10% down in what my plan is to just get it leased, fixed up a little bit. And once it's leased, has income coming in, I should be able to refinance it. All right, so you could see what the property looked like when I first bought it, and I had to make some decisions on what to fix up, what not to fix up. It's a little different with commercial than it is with residential. With my residential rentals, you know, I want them fixed up, you know, have them nice before we market them, before we get tenants in there. With commercial, it's different because a lot of tenants will want to customize the space to their own taste. So you don't always want to fix up everything, but at the same time, you want the space to look somewhat nice and be decent to get the attention of tenants. You don't want to have them looking at a complete dump and trying to get them to imagine what it could look like. At least that's my thoughts. I know there are some um, agents, brokers who market them, just 
not in good shape at all. It's kind of like you just have to use your imagination. But we decided to um, replace the flooring, paint, uh, moved a couple walls, not much, did a little bit, um, cleaned up the space, just made it much more usable for whoever was looking at it. And we hope that would attract some tenants, either one or two on the upper space. And eventually maybe we'd finish the basement. So we got to work on it. And um, here is what it looked like while we we're in progress of those repairs. I'm gonna give you an update on what we've done and also getting a tenant here. Um, show you the outside first. And of course, make sure you check out investformore.com for um, all my rental properties. I have a cool little page under my resources where you can see all my rentals, what I bought them for, what they rent for, all that good stuff. Um, so on the outside, we restained all the wood. There's a giant fence here before we took down. Um, still needs a little bit of work, but definitely looks a lot better just from doing some tree trimming and other stuff. Um, there's a before video when I first bought this that I'll link to in the description or comments, and you can see that. But lots of trees, could barely even see this building when I first bought it. And um, I bought this for $292,000. Um, it's about, what, 7,400 square feet, but half of that's in the basement, which is unfinished. We put up a little fence, had to replace some air conditioning units, also. Um, Replace that fence right there on the outside. So, haven't done a whole lot of work. Had one of my employees do most of it. But um, you can see, that's a pretty busy road right there. A and W right there. So it's definitely a very commercial spot. And we do have a company that wants to lease it from us. It's not official yet, but hopefully soon we'll get a lease in place and uh, start making money. So we did some basic repairs here. Um, it was split up in two units as a dentist's office and like a doctor's office before. And so our idea was to kind of fix up the front unit a little bit, make it look decent, and then we try and rent the back unit. Um, our contractor just blew out most of the electrical. <laughs> he found a live wire he thought was dead, so um, the lights aren't on, but at least back here. We painted, redid all the flooring, in this front unit, um, put in these counters, and added this wall to make another office. So nothing too crazy, but um, we did try and make it look a lot nicer. Just Home Depot commercial flooring. We will put that toilet where it goes. And uh, put a new cove, new paint. There's that office there. And back here, we've got to finish the flooring back here. There's a little room we demoed, had a counter in there. Another office here. Um, there's kind of a little half bathroom. An office here. And then we added that counter, which you can't see very well. And again, we just had all the lights on, but <laughs> of course you can't see. Here, maybe if I open this. This is the kitchen that we put in the little break room. So we still have to put counters and appliances in there. So that's about the work we did in the front unit. And we actually had an agent call me a little while ago and say, hey, is this for rent? We saw you're working on it. And he has an oil company that was looking at this front unit and they've decided now that they want to lease the whole upper level for well, right around 4,500 a month. So um, we're working on getting that in place, the lease signed. But if we do that, we may end up finishing the basement as well. But I'd be ecstatic to get this place rented for 4,500 on a three-year lease. You can see the bathroom. We did some work on as well. New tile, toilet, sides, and then this back area. We've made a ton of changes, we'll show you too. So, all these little rooms were set up for a doctor and had sinks in them and counters. So we took all those out to make them just plain office space for, you know, obviously the oil company. And we would do this anyway, so. 
can see we capped off the plumbing on everything. And then in here, if you look at the before video, there's a big giant counter running along there. And these walls kind of made some really weird choppy areas back there. So we took all that out, gonna make this one big open space. Again, the oil company is hoping to have that. I'm thinking most any company will want that as well because it wasn't very usable before. So we'll have those. There's more bedrooms or offices back here. This is where the contractor just had a nice little fire, <laughs> almost, where he touched the hot wire and it blew most electric. And we're also gonna replace quite a few of these windows. They're just single pane now, we're gonna put in double pane. All right, so you can see what we had in mind, what we are doing, and while we were working on the property, I had a broker contact me, he drove by it, saw we were working on it, and asked me, hey, is that place gonna be for rent? And I talked to him, said yes, we're gonna eventually have it for rent. Um, not sure on what we're asking yet or any of that. And he said, well, I've got a company that's been looking for a space in the area, love to take a look at it, and maybe get something going. So we showed him the property, they liked it, they had a few things that they might want done extra that we weren't doing, and we started discussing rent and prices and different things. And I kind of showed him originally an information sheet I'd gotten from the real estate broker I bought the property from, who had it listed. And it showed um, like gross rent of 4,500 a month, something like that, or maybe it was a little less than that I have to, but um, he, he kind of went off that. I'm saying, you know, that's just what the information I got was, that's not really what market rent is, but he seemed to like those numbers. And um, they were gross rents. So gross rent means the landlord, me, would pay for utilities, maintenance, snow removal, lawn care, property taxes, insurance. A lot of times you'll see triple N uh, leases on commercial properties. And that's where the tenant pays for everything. The tenant would be paying for the property taxes, the insurance, um, doing their own maintenance sometimes even. They pay for all the costs. So in a property like this, the difference between a triple N or a triple net lease and a gross lease might be as much as $1,500 for this property is 3,000, 3,300 square feet. So it kind of depends on what makes more sense to do gross or triple net. It's um, actually a lot easier for accounting purposes for me to pay the expenses and get one check from the tenant because if you're doing the triple net, it's kind of like you have to accumulate what the expenses are, figure out what they all are, charge them back to them. They can vary every month. So it can be a little tricky. So the gross lease was easier for me. Um, and it might actually have helped me refinance the property later because the rent is a much higher figure than the net lease. And you know, technically the appraiser should take that into consideration. However, um, seeing that big number, that big uh, rent, might have helped us refinance it for more money than if it was a triple net. So could be completely wrong, but that's my thoughts anyway. Um, so in the end, you know, they were really happy with how the property was being remodeled. They liked everything. I think the only big changes we made were we took out a few more walls in kind of the back area to give it a more open feel, give them more space in that back spot. So um, this final video of the property will show you exactly what we did, how it looks after everything was finished. I'm standing outside a commercial property we just finished. It's now rented. Um, I'll show you a quick peek of the outside here. It's kind of cold and windy and I'm still a little sick so I don't want to stay out here too long. But uh, did a lot of work on the outside of this property. Took down a fence, did some other stuff on the side. Restained the outside. Trimmed some trees to make it look a lot nicer. And back here, put up a new fence, new air conditioning units spruced up that part as well. So we'll head inside here. Of course, check out investformore.com for more information on all my rentals. I've got a page under my resources tab that shows all the rentals I own now with videos, cash flow, all that good stuff. I've also got a page for my flip, fix and flips. I flipped, what, 26 houses last year? Um, so this property, you can see the before video on that page too, or just look in the description of this video and I'll post a link to the before 
and we had some in progress videos too. <clears throat> I bought this for 292,000. I think it was in September. Um, needed some work. It was kind of a dentist's office and doctor's office, two units. Um, we got to work kind of renovating this front space, which was its own unit. And the idea was to get it finished, looking nice, see if we get a tenant here, and then we work on the back space. And what ended up happening, so I get some more lights on here, was um, a broker just happened to drive by this property as we were working on it. We didn't have a sign or anything up, asked if it was for lease. We said yes. <laughs> he had a client, um, actually an oil company, who was interested in leasing it. So they saw it a few times while we were working on it. Ended up coming to an agreement for them to lease the entire space. So we finished up this front space, finished up the back space, and actually today is their move-in day. Um, they're kind of getting some networking stuff together and supposedly might be bringing some furniture later. But the one thing, that glass is not in yet, it's on back order for this office. We put in that wall to make an extra office there. Um, just because there's a lot of open space here. So um, that's one of the renovations. But we came in, put a new flooring, new paint, uh, new cove base, put in some of those counters on the reception areas, um, redid the bathrooms a little bit. Um, show you what else we did here. Didn't really change the layout at all. Um, in here before, this was a dentist's office. That's kind of a lab where they'd make and mold the teeth trays. So we kind of left everything pretty much the same layout, just uh, refurbished it all. Have the ADA bars. And back here is kind of where we did a little more work. We put in this counter, those cabinets for the workspace. Um, right here, we put in a little kitchen area, break room, so they've got that. And then this back unit, we did a little more work in. You can see our cove base is peeling off already. I already talked to my contractor and said he needs to get over here and fix that right away, because that's not good. And actually, looking in here, this, there's no end cap on that counter and the door's off. So he's got some more stuff to do here and he's supposed to be done already because as I said, this is supposed to be moving day. Um, you know, put tile in there, paint. Uh, we end up spending, I don't have the final bills yet, but um, right around $50,000 for this rehab. And then we ended up renting it for $4,500 a month on the main floor. And actually, this is the biggest change right here. If you look at the before video, there were walls all over the place in there, kind of some weird offices, spaces. We ended up taking out all those walls per the request from the company running and made it one big, nice open space. There's also a big counter right here in the middle, um, kind of a doctor's office, all kinds of weird stuff there. So we took all that out. This is a much better space now. It's much nicer. Another thing too, just about all of these offices in here and back had sinks in them. So we capped all that plumbing, took out all those sinks, made them just regular offices, as you can see. Um, oh, I was talking about the lease. Here's another bathroom back here. Small. There's a bigger bathroom in front, I'll show you. So we rent it for $4,500 a month. Um, gross lease, so that means I am actually paying utilities, taxes, insurance. They're responsible for janitorial issues, things like that. Um, so it's only, well it's not only, it's 3,600, 3,700 square feet. So um, if it was a net lease where the tenant paid everything, then we would have gotten a much less a month. But the gross lease kind of makes it easy because there's no separate electric meters or um, gas meters if we ever want to finish the bottom unit. So, lots of offices back here. Like I said, almost all of those had sinks we took out. Be kind of cool, look at the before video if you want to see that. And then I'm back to the very beginning here. 
we have kind of this lobby area. And then here is the bathroom we redid here. This is your ADA bathroom, handicap accessible. That's basically what that means. Um, so there's that. And then I will go downstairs real quick. Um, show you what's going on down here. So this basement is unfinished. The tenant is only renting the upstairs. So for right now, this is all still mine. <laughs> Uh, we've got some old cubicles and stuff I managed to acquire from another deal, which I can't get rid of. Down here stored, ooh, a big pile of trash. It looks like the contractor's left down here. Holy cow. That's beautiful. Um, but there's this space you could finish, but there's no windows, there's no doors in it. So it'd be tough to finish this. It does have a sprinkler system down here though which is kind of crazy because um, none of the rest of the building is sprinklered. So I don't know if they're storing documents in here for the doctor's office or something. But there's that. There's this room right here, which is partially finished, but there's that. Um, oh, we have lots of extra flooring. Holy cow, I think we did not quite calculate that right. So lots of extra flooring. And then in here, we had to redo a lot of the heating system. So if you look at the before video, um, well, it's a mess in here too. They need to clean this up. There are lots of big furnaces and weird vents back here. Um, we had to replace a couple, replace some ACs, but got rid of most of the big giant vents and uh, looks much nicer, much better in here too. All right, so the more exciting space down here is this right here, which Still dirt, but um, we could finish this if we want to. We haven't decided exactly what we're going to do yet, but originally this building um, was zoned mixed use so you can use it for residential or commercial, which you still can. A doctor built this building, was planning to live down here, build an apartment for himself, work upstairs. So he did end up building the building, working upstairs, but he never built himself an apartment down here. So this has been unfinished for the last 50, 60 years. Um, so we could finish this either as a residential unit or a commercial unit, rent it as a separate unit down here. As you can see, it has a separate entrance, has some a lot of windows right there. Um, it would take quite a bit of money, as you can see. So I haven't decided for sure yet what I'm gonna do here. If we finished it, could probably get, oh, 1,500 a month, maybe a little more, we're figuring. But um, you know, this is that other small room I showed you right here. We could make that part of it. We could make it a work living space where you've got some bedrooms, a bathroom, a kind of a small kitchen. You could live here, work, um, lots of possibilities. But we have to bring in all the plumbing, finish the floor, you know, do electrical, all the drywall and all that stuff. So we'll see what happens. Um, haven't decided yet what I want to do, but for right now, super happy we got the upstairs rented. All right, so that is what the property looks like after it was all done. Like I said, I think we bought it in October of 2017. Um, started work on it right away. Um, I had my own guy, my own hourly kind of handyman working on it, which saved me a lot of money on the repairs. Um, he's much cheaper than using contractors. Uh, I think we spent around 50000 on that rehab. And the tenants moved in in January 1st. So we actually, it wasn't too long to get this property turned around and rented. And at that point, after we had it rented, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do a refinance at some point because I had used private money to buy the property. I had a one-year loan, um, like 10% interest rate, 90% of the value of what I purchased the, the property at. So I knew at some point I had to refinance out of that loan. It's too high of an interest rate. And I started talking to some lenders in February and they had some, you know, like, oh yeah, we can do it. We can get it going. And it turned out that we got the appraisal done. It came in okay, but their terms changed. So I switched to another lender. They got the deal done. I'll talk about the numbers more later, but um, it turned out to be a pretty easy process. We got it refinanced, took out about $68,000 of cash, uh, lowered my payment, and the property makes about $1,000 a month after all the expenses, 
that we pay and the rent coming in. So it's been a fantastic investment, really a cool experience. I wish I could have a lot more properties like this, but they're very hard to find. They don't come up that often. So um, right now we'll take a look at the numbers and I'll show you what we spent and what all the cash flow looks like on this property. All right, we're gonna take a look at the expenses, costs, money that I have tied up in this property. Uh, it was an interesting deal from the money aspect. Had a lot invested at one time, was able to pull a lot of that back out with the refinance. So um, some of these numbers are not exact, they're rounded, and I'll tell you why. Um, we used a lot of my hourly labor um, employees I have for some of the work, so it's hard to put a pinpoint on exactly what that costs um, because they're doing other things, other jobs, um, besides just working on this property. But it saved me so much money by using those guys instead of a contractor um, who would bid it out. All right, so like I said, purchase price was 292000 My initial loan was a private money loan, 90% um, of the purchase price, so the loan was 262800 So I had to come up with a $29,200 down payment. Then the loan points, um, the private lender charged me two points on that um, 262, so that's 5256. Um, some closing costs in there when I bought it. We spent about $50,000 on the repairs, which was some heating work, uh, replacing the flooring, repainting, moved a couple walls, and then um, some electrical work and some plumbing. So it wasn't a crazy amount of work, but it was a big property. And like I said, we didn't finish the basement. We didn't do any work down there, which would have probably doubled that cost. And then using my own guys really saved me a ton of money on this deal. Um, because, yeah, I'm paying $22 an hour. And the guy I used actually had a ton of experience in commercial properties, which was awesome. Um, he's a huge help. And that, you know, took a little longer because he just had one or two guys working on it, but really saved me and helped me out a lot. And ironically, we actually used um, some temporary workers from a place called uh, People Ready. And they helped my guy with some, you know, manual labor stuff a few times. And I actually bought the new commercial building, a 68,000 square foot building, where I have my new office is going to. Their office is actually in that building, so I'm now their landlord. Um, but at that point, never even knew they were here, didn't know where they existed. So it was ironic that that ended up happening. Anyway, moving on. Um, some carrying costs, you know, I had to pay utilities, loan points, um, not loan points, but interest uh, before we got it rented. Uh, broker's fees, the tenants I had move in had a broker represent them. So I had to pay them or pay him for his services to uh, represent the tenants. I did not have a broker on my side. I am a broker, so I just wrote the lease and did that side myself. Initial costs I had into this out-of-pocket were about 95000 So that was a lot of money um, to buy, rehab this property. Um, but in the end, I think it was worth it. Um, eventually, as I said, I got it rented, and then I had it refinanced. So the appraisal was 2500 Commercial appraisals are extremely expensive. Um, loan fees about thirty-two hundred. Uh, loan fees are actually pretty reasonable on this thing. They charged me half a point origination fee and had some other fees in there, so that brought my total costs up to over a hundred thousand dollars in this property. However, I got sixty-eight thousand back when I refinanced it. So the appraisal came at four hundred forty-one thousand. I was able to get a loan for 75% of that, which was about 330,000. And subtract that from my original loan, I had 68,000 cash back. So my actual cash out of pocket in this investment was $32,656. Oh, the rental information said so rents for $4,500 a month. Now it's a gross lease, which means the landlord who is me pays almost all the expenses. So I pay for utilities, um, insurance on the property, uh, taxes, maintenance. Um, I also added some more money for maintenance and vacancies in the future. They're on a three-year lease, and hopefully there's not much going on, but there could be stuff pop up. And then my payment is about 2000 a month, which includes interest and um, principal. So it's a 20-year amortization, my new loan, so I'm paying down principal at a pretty fast rate. So if you add all that in together, um, I'm making about $1,000 a month on this property after all my expenses, which is about 37% cash on cash return compared to what I have invested in it. So pretty happy with those returns, pretty excited about um, that investment. Love to have 
10 more of these if I, if I could find them. They're not easy to find, though. And uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic investment after not thinking I really wanted to buy it for sure in the very beginning. And I still have upside as well. I have the full finished, unfinished basement, which is not leased to anybody. So we could go in there and we could finish it, lease it out, add more value, get more rent if we wanted to. And at some point I may do that, although it's not on my radar at the moment. And then on top of all this, I've still got $111,000 in equity after doing the refinance in the property. Um, like I said, it appraised for $441,000 and um, bought it for two ninety two. dollars so we subtract out my expenses, repairs, different things. We did pretty well on this deal. Um, I thought it was a really good deal, but this really helped confirm it and show me that, yes, I did get a good deal on this commercial property. Should be a good rental for a long time to come and really happy with it. All right, so those are all the numbers on this rental property. All right, so here's the property um, about seven months after we first purchased it. The tenants are in there, moved in. Um, everything is looking pretty decent. Been a great investment so far. And actually just came over here, gonna do a little bit of cleanup for them in the yard, um, spruce up a few things now that it's spring and uh, we can work on that. So, been an awesome investment, fun time, kind of digging into my first real commercial investment and uh, hopefully do a lot more of these.